Hey Cool Worlds, David here. This week I have a new paper out timed with my travel to Stanford University this week to attend a meeting about what can only be described as one of the most ambitious projects ever devised, an interstellar spacecraft. It's called Project Starshot and it's been funded by the Breakthrough Initiatives Foundation set up by billionaire Yuri Milner. The plan is to send a spacecraft to our nearest star, Proxima Centauri, within a generation really by any means necessary. And what I mean by that is that the project is willing to throw out the conventional practice of launching huge rockets, sending astronauts and large orbiting satellites into space. Instead, the plan is to accelerate a grand mass microchip sized spacecraft up to one fifth the speed of light, reaching Proxima Centauri in 21 years. In other words, in our lifetime. To accomplish this, the microchip will be attached to a reflective sail up to four meters across and perhaps just a hundred atoms thick, which will then be pushed along by an intense laser beam produced here on the Earth. So the propulsion method here is radiation pressure. If you want to learn more about how this works, I shot a recent video to do with mirrors. I'll put a link at the end of this video so you can check that one out as well. These so-called light sails have been demonstrated before, even in space, but using light from the sun rather than that from lasers, as Starshot proposes. By firing gigawatt lasers for hours or days at the sail, the sail should be able to accelerate up to one-fifth the speed of light, thanks to its incredible lightness. Of course, there are many unsolved problems and questions right now with this project, such as, you know, what is this spacecraft realistically going to do once it arrives? How will it send back whatever data it takes? And what kind of material does the sail need to be made out of in order for this to work? But of course, that's what this meeting is all about, is for scientists to get together, talk about these problems, and maybe come up with some solutions. So as I said, I wrote a new paper this week about Project Starshot, which is definitely a bit out of my usual comfort zone of writing papers about exoplanets. Actually, the idea came about whilst filming the Cool Woods video I shot about mirrors recently. So it's a nice example of how outreach like this can actually lead to real scientific research. My paper essentially looks at how Einstein's theory of special relativity will affect the sales journey. Now, special relativity is only usually important when we're talking about objects which are moving at speeds comparable to the speed of light. 300,000 kilometers per second. So of course this means that special relativity is not something we've had to worry about with humanity's previously launched rockets and spacecraft. For example, humanity's fastest spacecraft, the New Horizons mission, is traveling at a speed of about 20,000 times less than that of the speed of light. But Starshot is planning to reach relativistic speeds, and that's why we have to account for special relativity when we try to calculate its journey. So let's assume, to start off, that the sail acts like a perfect mirror, reflecting every photon back and never absorbing. This is the ideal case, and here the mirror will achieve maximal thrust off the laser beam, since the photons exchange twice the momentum versus that of an absorbed photon. In this case, my paper predicts that you need about 10% more photons, or equivalently 10% more laser energy, to accelerate Starshot up to one-fifth the speed of light, versus that you'd get if you did the simple non-relativistic calculation. Okay, so why should this be? Well, what's happening is that as Starshot accelerates to ever faster speeds, i.e. gains kinetic energy, its relativistic mass, via e equals mc squared, must also increase, and thus it becomes harder and harder to accelerate the spacecraft further. Actually, no matter how many photons you fire at the sail, you can never reach the speed of light. The mass just ever increases, ensuring Einstein's cosmic speed limit. Now, real sails, though, will not have perfect reflectivity. They will absorb some fraction of the photons which strike it. Okay, so how does this change things? Well, first, those photons do still accelerate the sail, but the momentum exchange is half of that of before, so it's less efficient. Second, and more importantly, those absorbed photons will heat up the spacecraft until it reaches some thermal equilibrium point. In equilibrium, the sail emits as much power as it absorbs, and thus it has reached a stable, but possibly very hot temperature. So how hot is this point then? and will the sail actually survive these temperatures? This depends on how long I fire my laser beam at the sail for. If I want to get Starshot up to one-fifth the speed of light, then it takes about 10 terajoules of laser energy. And purely in terms of the final speed, it really doesn't matter whether I fire all of that energy in a single burst, or if I spread it out over weeks or even months. 
the final speed will be the same. But in contrast, the peak temperature of the sail is going to be very sensitive to the time over which I spread this energy over. Blasting it with all that energy in a single short burst will of course be worse, leading to a much higher peak temperature. But on the other hand, in a practical sense, short durations are ideal because even after a few hours, this sail can be halfway across the solar system. And so that's gonna add obviously a lot of challenges for your Earth-based lasers. By redriving the sail's velocity curve for imperfect relativistic mirrors, my paper shows that we could get away with a four hour firing window, assuming that the spacecraft can withstand about 300 degrees Celsius, and we can make a sail with 99.99% reflectivity or better. Now, although in this scenario, the spacecraft's acceleration is pretty extreme, it's something like 400 G, the actual force applied to the sail is relatively small because it's so light. And thus the actual pressure which the sail feels is something like 25 pascals. In terms of structural integrity of our sail though, it's more important that this force applied is homogeneous across the sail. In order to do that, you're probably gonna require some beam shaping of the lasers back on Earth. Another challenge is that the laser beam, as seen from the perspective of a moving sail, is going to be redshifted. And since the reflectivity of a sail or a mirror is dependent upon the color of light which strikes it, then that means that maybe one way to fix this problem would be to have a tunable laser back on the Earth in order to maintain a constant thrust and avoid overheating of your spacecraft. Overall, this was a fun paper outside of my usual research area, but I had a blast thinking about this incredible mission concept. And personally, I am optimistic that we can solve these engineering problems and achieve the dream of Starshot. The idea of seeing a photo of an exoplanet within my lifetime is mind-blowing. In many ways, it echoes the 1960s moonshot I mean, 50 years prior to that, it was completely laughable that people would be walking on the moon by the 1960s, but the will of a nation and human ingenuity made it a reality. Thank you so much for watching everybody. I'm gonna put a link down below for a Facebook live stream of the Starshot meeting this week. I'm also putting a link down there for my new paper, which just caveat, by the way, is still under the refereeing process. If you wanna get more videos like this, then do make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. And hey, if you have any comments about Project Starshot, you can stick them down in the comments and I will try to get back to you. So until the next video, stay thoughtful and stay curious.